In this session, we'll cover opening and saving files on your personal storage, like your local hard drive, flash drives, or right to your mobile device. We're also going to discuss using the server or cloud storage provided within All Access. The benefits of using the server storage is that you'll have access to it regardless of what device you're using. This storage is supported by secure, redundant systems. However, we don't provide restore options for student data. So, we recommend you regularly back up files you put there, as the college provides this only on a best effort basis. Here's a list of some of the topics in this session and their times. So let's go ahead and get started. The most common way to access your files is from inside the application you want to use. Let's use Word 2010 as an example. We'll launch Word and then open a file on a flash drive. After Word is open, we'll select File, then Open. From here, you can see the different locations available to you. The default location will be your document library on the college servers. You may receive a prompt at this point to allow access to your files. I recommend Permit All Access, but select whatever works for you. If you scroll down, you'll see a, the local disk on your computer. To get to your Documents folder, go underneath the Users in Windows 7 or underneath Documents and Settings in Windows XP. Then just browse into the folders for your user on that computer. I want to open a file on a flash drive, so I'll select the computer icon. Now at this point I haven't plugged a flash drive into my local computer, so I only see the C and D drives. I'll plug in a flash drive, and it should appear automatically. Normally they're labeled something like removable disk. You can also right click and select refresh if a drive doesn't automatically show up. Now that the drive is up and available, you can go ahead and browse to the file, and I'm going to open it. Okay, now I want to show you the second method of opening files in All Access. We'll go back to the main section of Applications and look for a program called My File Explorer. This opens Windows Explorer on the server. It gives me a list of the drives I have available, even the flash drive that I just inserted into my computer. I can open the flash drive and select the file I want to open. I can also open other file types, and since I'm already logged into the server, it should open instantaneously. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the computer again and get to get a list of my files. Look for the H drive in the Network Location section. In the H drive, you can see there are several folders. The most important is the My Documents folder. As you can see, the Documents folder is currently empty. I'm now going to open Word, create a new file, and just save that file back to the default Documents folder on the server. As I see, save this, you'll see I select the Documents Library along the left to get back to the default server folder. Now let's go back to My File Explorer so you can see where the files are saved. Now you can see that the My Documents folder on the H drive is no longer empty and the file we saved is listed here. Let's go ahead and switch over to Mac OS X. We'll get started by opening up Microsoft Word. To access your files, select File, then Open, and it will automatically go to the My Documents folder located on the servers. You can see that the file we were working with on the PC is available here as well. I'm going to scroll down to the computer section of the file browser. Once you select it, you may get a prompt requesting access to the files on your Mac. Read and write access is recommended. Now you can see the list of the folders on my Mac. You can select to open any of the files from the folders here. However, I'm going to open a file on a flash drive on my Mac. 
I'll insert the drive, and you should see the icon show up on the desktop. Because I added the flash drive after logging in, I have to go to the Citrix Viewer menu to enable it. In the Drive section, select to enable the drive in the Removable Storage menu item. The USB drive should now be available as the A drive, and you can open files on it. Let's go back and open a file from the server storage in All Access. Go to the File menu and select Open. Select the Documents Library and you'll be taken to your space on the college servers. And I'll open that test document again. Now I'll minimize Word. If you haven't seen the tutorial on minimizing login times, this just keeps my session open so I don't have to log in again. And now I'm going to switch over to my File Explorer application. This opens a Windows Explorer window from the server with a list of all my files. We've already attached that local flash disk into the A drive, so we can open that if we want. You can see the Word file we opened before. However, I'll open up this Excel spreadsheet. Let's do one final example on the Mac. In this one, I'll save a file directly to the local hard drive. I'll bring up Microsoft Word and create a new document. Now, to save this document back to our local computer, we'll select Save and then browse to the local disk on our Mac. Then we'll select the Documents folder and save the file. You may receive a prompt about saving the file in the new docx format. Click OK to this to continue. Now we'll go to the Documents icon in the dock and I'll just open it in the Finder. Now you can see that this file is saved here locally on the Mac. Let's look at accessing files inside a virtual desktop. First, I'll scroll down and start a Windows 7 virtual machine. The system will now log me in and set up my profile on the virtual computer. I'll click on the Windows logo button and select Computer from the list. This will open Windows Explorer and I can see the files I have access to. You can see the H drive, and in the My Documents folder you can see the files we've been using up to this point. If I go back to the computer, you can also see the other files on my computer here in the other section. I'll insert a flash drive. As usual, it should be listed as a removable disk. Right click and select a refresh to display if needed. You may receive a prompt to allow the virtual machine to access your flash drive. Read-write access is recommended. Now you can select to open files as needed. For the last part of the session, I'll cover accessing files from an iPad. The experience for other mobile devices is pretty similar, so I'll only cover the one. First, we'll go ahead and open up Word. Now I'll select to open a file. To get to the storage available in All Access, just select the Documents Library here. To get a full list of all the storage locations, just click on the computer icon. Now you can see the H drive, as well as the storage on the local mobile device. I'll open this test document, and then we'll save it back to the device with a 2 at the end of the file name. If you haven't looked at the gestures in the help settings for your device, you really should. If you see here, I'll use three fingers to automatically bring up the keyboard. I'll add a 2 to the end of the file name, and then click Return to save. Now, to verify the file is there, I'll select to open a file again. 
Now you can see that the new file is also listed on my local device. You can also select the Save Things to the My Documents folder inside your H drive from here as well. One last thing about using files on your mobile devices. Normally you can't do a lot with files saved on those mobile devices, but you can copy them back to your computer using something like iTunes. You can see here in the app section under Citrix you can copy local files back to your computer if needed. In summary, there are a lot of ways you can access files from inside the system. You can access files on your local computer or mobile device, flash drive, or in the allocated storage space on the college servers. The benefit of using the server storage is that you can access it from almost any device that you attach from. However, always make sure you regularly make a backup of that somewhere else. Also beware the server storage is limited to a few hundred megabytes, so make sure that you don't fill it up. Call the SLCC Technology Help Desk if you still have any questions at 801-957-5555. Thanks for watching.